thematic talk focusing on a different area in optics and photonics. And I'm glad to talk about biophotonics in this stage. I'm also working on biophotonics. So, you know, if you search for the word biophotonics in the standard Merriam-Webster dictionary, you would not find it. Yet this topic is as old as when the first microscopic or, uh, image of an organism was taken in 17th century by Anton von Leeuwenhoek uh, in 17th century. So from that point, biophotonics has evolved to cover various applications of interest in biology and medicine. Biophotonics is the application of photonic tools to understand, assess and control anatomy and physiology of biological organisms at the molecular, cellular, tissue and organism levels. Optical biopsy and related techniques have gained increased interest in the field of biophotonics. And here we have four speakers representing various institutes across our country and beyond to unravel the concept of optical biopsy and various interesting applications. Our first speaker is Professor Asima Pradhan. Dr. Asima Pradhan completed her MSc from Delhi University and carried out her PhD under supervision of Professor R. R. Alfano at City University, New York. She joined Department of Physics, IIT Kanpur in 1993 and was also associated with the Center for Lasers and Photonics at IIT Kanpur. She works on optical methods for solid tissue biopsy, especially on extraction of intrinsic fluorescence using polarized fluorescence and elastic scattering spectra. Please welcome Dr. Asim on stage. Okay, before I start, let me just... Uh, First, I'd like to thank uh, Anita for her idea. This was her brainchild. And I'm really, really happy to see so many women here. You know, I've come from a place, again, like many of us have, you know, where it's male-dominated. I was there as a woman faculty member in the Department of Physics at Dikanpur for uh, ages, I'll say, all alone, just me. But, uh, you know, so it's good to see this. And uh, not that, you know, like everybody says, you know, it's not always true that we want this sort of a gathering. Once in a while, we want this gathering. So that's why I would like to uh, thank Anita again. And uh, also the organizing committee. Um, yeah, sorry. Sujata, Shobha, me, we were all, you know, supporting her. And uh, of course, you know, I don't want to miss out on Urvashi. She took it upon herself to say that, okay, I'll be the driving force here. And uh, so by the end of, uh, you know, towards the end of this, you know, this period that we were having meetings, there were just two weeks left and I was thinking it's all going on autopilot. Nothing's happening. We are fine. But I think she was busy and we were quiet. So that's how it went on. And uh, so now I can just go ahead and tell you a little bit about uh, biophotonics in India, then and now. So I just briefly tell you about, uh, you know, what was happening, because I have 10 minutes. And uh, so you'll get to know terminologies. Okay? That's what you'll get to know here. So uh, I'll start with telling you that I joined uh, Kanpur early, um, very late 93, so December, you know, I mean, I was just telling Anita that today is the day I landed in, uh, uh, not in Kanpur, in Bhuvaneshwar, uh, 29 years ago. Okay? So I was here. And uh, so then when I came in, then there was nothing known as biophotonics. Okay? So I don't know who decided to, you know, have me here. And uh, in hindsight, I think it was a foresight of the seniors. And I feel good that uh, we managed to uh, go ahead with it. So uh, I'll just tell you internationally what was happening first. You know, um, Mid-1980s, 1990s, so this was known as biomedical optics. Okay. And uh, then mid-90s, it uh, became established as a mature area. So you started having conferences and where you had... Uh, the international scenario essentially led by groups at uh, CUNY and MIT, okay, where one of my, my professor and uh, Arar Alfano and Michael Feld from MIT. They were the ones who uh, actually dominated the field at that point. And uh, MIT, Arar Kortem, Rebecca. So she was leading and she's still leading, I think, right? So, yeah. I remember um, 
I, I know I may cross the time, but I just want to say that Michael Feld once said, you know, he had come to India and he said that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, now she's my competitor and she's going ahead more than me. <laughs> so that's how she was. And uh, while I say that, let me also <coughs> tell you, Rebecca Richard Gautam is a leader in this area, has been. And what I read, if I am correct, you may correct me, she has five children. And so this is what I, you know, I was just amazed. I have one son and it's very, it was very difficult. I was like, oh, son, and then how to manage? Five children. So that's the difference, you know, in US and here, how you manage your careers. Okay? Somewhere we are lacking. Okay? And um, so late 90s, this got to be known as uh, biophotonics, not biomedical optics anymore because the research geared towards biomedical technology. So it became biophotonics. Then there were several groups who worked on basic translation research and various biophotonics domains following the pioneering works. Now, uh, the emerging fields were early and non-invasive diagnosis of disease using optical spectroscopy, and uh, which is Spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy, fluorescence spectroscopy, elastic scattering spectroscopy, all the domains that you could have. And if you look at uh, those two figures that I have there, uh, I think I need to find here. Here. That's actually tissue and we uh, put uh, blue light there and we see the scattering. So I enjoy doing this, you know, once in a while. Put light on the tissue and you see this scattered light there and then here, this is, I put a filter in front and we get the fluorescent light. Okay. Generally, the fluorescent light that you get from here, if the light that, you, that falls on the tissue is blue, then you'll get a yellow light. Okay. So the flavins are the ones that will come in. And I one day wondered, and why am I not getting yellow? Because there's a leakage of the blue coming in. So I still see, I see some green there. Okay. So I enjoy showing these two pictures. And uh, that's why it's there. Then, so uh, people then worked on uh, developing optical imaging techniques. Spectroscopy imaging, these are the two areas okay, that got highlighted at that time for understanding tissue and un its underlying structures also. Then development of novel optical biosensors. Okay, so people again worked on many types of different bio biosensors. Now, um, this also was another area which was important because you wanted to uh, trap cells, okay, micro manipulate these cells, and that is uh, what was done uh, out there in the uh, West and also in, the, in India later on. Phototherapeutic applications, photodynamic therapy, which was very important. Uh, it hasn't taken up as much uh, as it should have, I feel, because essentially that the uh, photo, um, Therapy which, in, which needs those materials, I think are still not up to mark. I think that's the reason why we still don't have photodynamic therapy being used regularly in hospitals. Then nanobiophotonics, that's an area you have books now, nanobiophotonics, which are good to read, okay? and with nanoparticle-based disease diagnostics. Early 2000s, I went to the US, I met Anita there, and what do I see? In vivo diagnosis all started, everything started there. They want to bring technology to the clinics. And where are we okay, at that point? Indian scenario. Okay. So the area was completely in its infancy. And uh, so we had few research um, groups and mostly working in vitro. That means not in clinics, not on patients, on tissue chunks that we could get. And while I say tissue chunks, let me also tell you that it was very, very difficult at that point to uh, find people, you know, uh, to find doctors who would give us tissue, okay? to tell them that, you know, okay, we want this sort of a tissue, we want that. But again, to say, tell you that they were also very supportive. Right in the beginning when I got there, I had a senior professor who got me connected to a pathologist. And... After that, we kept on working together. There were times when we got this horrible, smelly 
tissue coming into the lab and said, throw it away, please, <laughs> take it back. So it was very difficult for them to understand, difficult for us to make them understand that we want these precisely, you know, very small pieces of tissue clean, which we will use and return to you. Okay. So these were uh, some of the difficulties that one faced. And uh, so we did, uh, in fact, I mean, as I go along, I'll just tell you this also. Um, students coming in at that point, very difficult to convince them to come to bio, biophotonics or biomedical optics. I didn't have students for, uh, I had MTech students. I didn't have PhD students for, I think, uh, four, five, six years. Okay. They wouldn't come physics, right? I mean, high and mighty physics, who's going wanting to do this biology and what is she doing? Some tissue, God knows what it is. So this, I got to know. See, at that point, you don't get to know. You think there's something wrong on your side. Okay? But my students told me later, they'd be in, on the corridors, they would be told, your life is finished. And this is from one of my students who is a, a, a faculty member at IIT Indore right now. So, uh, you know, I mean, things change. But what happened at that point was there was just absolutely no idea of what I was doing. I felt like I was in a place where I was a misfit. Yeah. But it went on, you know, I mean, it was fine. Uh, then, so what we worked on, optical spectroscopy diagnosis of cancer, optical techniques for biomedical imaging, again, spectroscopy and imaging, and phototherapeutics some people worked on. Here I have, I've shown you, uh, this, that's my hand, okay, with light falling on two minutes, okay, white light, and you have red coming out, all of you know about this, it's light scattered from your body. So what I generally say is, if light falls on you, if you have the right sort of detector, we are all glowing, okay, so, and uh, that's, if I want to look at absorption, I have blood, there's blood in the tissue, and as I say this, I must also tell you that I had students who would say that, okay, you know, I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm a vegetarian, okay? So I would, I didn't, I said something which I don't want to say over here. And then I had students who would almost throw up, you know, and uh, say, I just cannot work on this. Finally, you know, being a, I mean, and she was a girl student, so she managed, and after a while, she was taking the tissue. I said, aren't you feeling uh, bad about it? No, I'm fine. So the grit is there in girls, you know. That's what, uh, okay. So uh, these were the groups that uh, worked on this initially, uh, from 95 onwards. RR Cat, Indore, they were actually the leading group here. Then uh, my group, then Professor Kartha, okay, and then uh, Professor Ganeshan at Anna University. RRCAT did a lot of work and they actually got into the uh, point where they did oral cancer detection okay, and uh, had a probe built, so it was nice. I'll not go through all this. Uh, their publications at that time, they were much more than what I have showed you. Okay. And uh, then my group, okay, what I had was a spectrometer which came in very late in my life when I really needed it, I didn't have it. Because just the fact that, you know, this is your bread and butter, uh, not butter, just bread, right? So, and we need it, but nobody thought of it. I got three lakhs from DST at a time when I really needed 20 lakhs at least. Okay? So uh, the struggle goes on. All of us in the 90s, we know, funding was very, very difficult. It's much, much better now. So this is, uh, we did some work with, uh, mainly with the uh, fluorimeter, and then worked on intrinsic fluorescence, polarized fluorescence, polarized fluorescence, polarized elastic scattering, got rid of all the effects of absorption and scattering, so that you can only get purely fluorescence, okay, from tissue. That's what gave us, uh, you know, good results, and we moved on. So what we did was we had successful evaluation, resulted in a handheld probe and which we are now testing in the hospitals. Lot more to do in it, but we have at least gotten to the point of where students are using it on patients. And I must again tell you, give credit to the boys in the lab. This is cervical cancer where we have women patients. They don't flinch. 
Okay, the boys go and they do these measurements. I'm amazed, I'm worried that they're going to say we're not going to do it, but they do it. Okay? So whereas girl students did react initially and then they were okay with that. Okay. So this is what we have, that's a smartphone based uh, probe that we have developed. And this second one is for oral cancer, we combined imaging and spectroscopy, not yet started testing on it, just have the device now. Publications during that uh, time, okay, doesn't look too good, I mean, the print, okay. Then uh, Professor Kartha, he had just come from BARC, okay, retired, and he had his own group, and out of which, you know, uh, they, uh, there were two, three uh, scientists who came out from there and they have actually done good work afterwards. You can go ahead and look at Mahato, Santosh, Murli Krishna, they're all doing very well. And uh, then Anna University, Ganeshan, and his wife Aruna. Okay, Aruna is not here and uh, couldn't contact her actually, but it would have been nice to listen to her also. So these were the main groups there. So dedicated workshops and, you know, National uh, Laser Symposium, we had biophotonics there, and conferences, all expanded. And then research actually from other domains also uh, came into picture. For example, I mean, algorithms, uh, you know, Shobhan Majumda, he brought out this support vector machines into this, uh, into biophotonics. We had the wavelet transform, okay, uh, which we <coughs> use for feature extraction. and. Now, what we have is a lot of startups. We have a startup too. Okay, I won't tell you the name, it's a tongue twister. And uh, have sprung up to bring this blue sky research into technology. And industrial contributions that are groups in uh, um, GE, Philips, and also Biocon. Okay, they are now doing oral cancer, uh, cervical cancer actually. Just that's what I saw recently. Marketable products are available. You can see that one. I don't know whether you can see that well enough. Oral cancer by N. Subhash looks like a toothbrush, oral cancer detection. Okay. And uh, now the focus is again on microscopy and imaging. Okay. And I like the fact that people are working on light sheet microscopy, polarization based, and then there are many other like Muller matrix imaging is what one should go ahead and do. Okay, uh, so, so it's uh, basically aiming towards point of care in rural areas. That's the need of the hour. That's what one should focus on. I'd also like to tell all of you that whatever research you do, aim towards something which is applicable at some point. That's where I'm getting some satisfaction. Now, I don't know where it will end, but I know I have a device which is a prototype. I don't know whether it will become a product, but I'm somewhere there, okay? So that's what I'd like all of you to do. Thanks. Thank you, Professor.